Hi everybody, welcome to MacMind.io. My name is Johnny Mac. I'm a software professional and host of this channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Excited to share with you a little about how to use an RTC module to keep time on your Raspberry Pi. So you might recall I've been sharing about a project I'm working on where we're setting the time over Bluetooth because the device does not have internet access and we don't want to rely on trying to connect a keyboard to the device after it is set up and so we can set the time over Bluetooth. And so I made a few videos on this um, that you might recall and uh, we're able to get that going. We debugged a few issues there, uh, but ultimately we're able to set the time on the device over Bluetooth and that's great. So what's the problem? Now, what I discovered is even though we're setting the time and now the Pi has accurate time based on what your current time is on your phone, it's drifting, right? And it's not keeping time when the device turns off and comes back on, which are two features that are fairly important if you wanna make sure you have consistent time. You don't wanna to have to be setting it each time you turn on the device again, even if you can do it easily over Bluetooth. And that drift, right? I mean, it was pretty significant even just after a day, you know, it was five, 10 seconds behind, which is not gonna work, right? So looking into this, the way that you resolve um, this type of issue is with something called an RTC module, which is a real-time clock, okay? And so this is the device that I discovered um, in uh, looking into this. So um, this is from Hi Let Go, um, and this is five of these little modules for, for $15 here. You know, this is where I am, this is how much it costs. And um, you can see it has a little battery in it, right? And then it has this little chip, and all it does is just keep time, and then if you turn the device off, it's gonna use the battery power to keep time, okay? So when you turn it back on, it's going to uh, inform the device. The current time is based on how much time has gone by since you turned it off. And this is cool too. You don't need to depend on an NTP service over the internet so you can keep accurate time and reduce the stress on the CPU significantly. Um, so that if you're writing a time sensitive application that's checking the time frequently, then you're not overloading the CPU with that um, responsibility, okay? So what we'll do is just show you how to set this up. There are a few things that you're gonna wanna know. You know, how do we install this on the device? How do we then configure it to make sure that, um, one, it is uh, gonna run, right? And two, that when you uh, turn off and turn on the device, it's going to sync that RTC time back to the system time, okay? So we'll get through uh, that in this video today. Cool, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install it, right? And you know, it comes in these little packages. Um, each one was uh, packaged up independently, okay? And then when you open it up, you can see, you know, here it is, right? It's, it's pretty small, right? Um, which is cool. And then one thing I want you to know about, all right, just reading reviews, I like to read reviews and see what people have to say. And there was a report that, you know, chips were being delivered and they didn't match um, you know, the, the model number. Uh, and so the model number is uh, significant. There's an SN at the end of the model number that you wanna make sure that your modules has on it, okay? And this, I, from what I gathered, has to do with um, you know, a crystal oscillator. That was the term that was used in the review that is um, included with this SN model. And that's going to be a much higher precision and you know better module. So if it doesn't have that SN at the end, then you probably want to get in touch with you know whoever uh, you bought it from and return it. Uh, that mine do have SN, so I feel pretty good about that. Okay, so then to install this on the Pi, right? We have this kind of interface here. Um, you know, this is a Pi Four, but the Pi Five has the same. You know interface here and this is where you you can install you know peripherals right you know the the hats and that kind of thing and technically i guess this qualifies as a hat <laughs> it's a tiny little teeny tiny hat just a teeny tiny little hat um and so what we're gonna do is you know just looking at this board here um the pins that are you know kind of furthest away from this ethernet jack um are going to be and closest to the inside of the board okay are going to be and there's five pins and we're just going to plop this guy right down onto those pins like that okay and that is how this is installed 
all right? So hopefully that's pretty straightforward and uh, you can get that installed without too much trouble. Okay, so then we're gonna hop over to our code and I'm just gonna continue to develop on the project that uh, you know I was sharing about to set the time using the Bluetooth service. So this is the BLE server project, you know, in the tutorials repo uh, on my GitHub. And so um, I, I'm also gonna go ahead and upgrade this to the latest convention uh, that I'm using for these projects. So just bear with me for a sec while I do that. Okay, so now that we've updated the convention for this app, let's just go into how this is gonna work, right? So the first thing that we wanna do is um, we wanna make sure that the kernel knows about this hardware, okay? And so we're gonna do that in our um, config.txt. And here at the top, uncomment some or all of these to enable the optional hardware interfaces, right? This first one, we wanna make sure uh, that we uncomment. Uh, DT param equals I2C underscore arm on. And then we're gonna add one more um, just down here all the way at the bottom where we're gonna just uh, say DT overlay equals I2C dash RTC comma DS3231, okay? This is gonna inform the uh, kernel about this new hardware, okay? So the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and add uh, a package. So the package we're gonna add is called I2C Tools, okay? And we can just go ahead and throw this after our TZ data, okay? And then uh, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we load certain modules when uh, the device boots, okay? And so we need to add some modules to the Etsy modules file. And I'm doing this in a post build script um, in the device here. So at this level, um, uh, post build, script okay i think that's right okay and that's going to look like this and we're just going to go and add these modules um i2c dev and i2c bcm 2835 to this file at c modules okay um so this is important too we got to remember that we want to set permissions on this uh, script so that rpi image gen can execute it so let's go ahead and do that uh chmod 755, okay, so that's good. And then the next thing that we wanna do is add uh, what we're gonna call RTC sync service. And this is gonna be a systemd service and it's gonna run on boot. And it's gonna sync the RTC hardware clock to the system using the hc2sys command. Um, so that's gonna look something like this. We know how to set up uh, systemd services in our image. So let's go ahead and add one. We'll call this RTC setup. And then the script in here is just gonna be the RTC service sync dot service. Okay. And that's gonna look like this. It's a system D service. So that should look familiar if you've been following along with some of these videos. And then we wanna make sure that we inform um, BDEB strap about this via this customized hook. Uh, so we have the RTC customized hook, and that's just gonna do an rsync of uh, this systemd service file over to the systemd system in our root FS, okay? And then enable it on boot, okay? So we're getting pretty far along here. The next thing we wanna make sure that we do is when we set the time over Bluetooth, we want to set that hardware clock also. And so you might recall, um, we have this Rust server and it is um, setting the date and then setting the time zone, right? So that looks something like this. We set the date and then later we use time date CTL to set the time zone. So what I've done is I've just wrapped those up into a script um, and that's going to come down in here in our rootfs overlay user local bin, the same place where we're copying this BLE server binary. We're just gonna create now a set time uh, script. And that's gonna look something like this. 
and it, it's just going to do the same thing, right? It's going to set the date and then it's going to set the time uh, zone. But now it's going to add a third command to set this hardware clock. So that's going to sync the system time to the hardware clock, right? The this this RTC sync service sets syncs the hardware clock to the system when we boot. But when we set the time and we set the system time, we want to sync that to the hardware clock. So that's what this one's going to do. And again, we need to make sure that we're on top of the permissions for this. So we will go ahead and find um, this in the uh, rootfs overlay and set the permissions on that. And then we're gonna update our Rust service so that we are now calling set time instead of uh, calling the date and then calling the um, set time zone. So that's gonna look um, like this. We're just gonna update this piece of the code here uh, with this new way to do it. And let's just formatting there. So now you can see we're calling set time, right? We're just gonna pass in this timestamp and the time zone, okay? As you know, timestamp is gonna be used and passed into date. Time zone is gonna be used set to uh, time date control set time zone. And then we're gonna sync with this hardware clock command. Okay, hopefully that is all we need. Why don't we go ahead and build this now and then we can test it out. Okay, great, we're able to build that. So let's go ahead and install it on our USB stick and see um, if we can demo this working. Okay, so that's done. Let's see if we can pop it in and how it works. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and boot up the Pi. There's the rainbow screen and it should boot up. Okay. And we can see that the date is wrong, right? It says that it's March 1st and the UTC uh, time zone, right? And so let's go ahead now and we can call up our app that we've built. Okay, this is the same one from the previous video. And we'll go ahead and connect. <clears throat> to our device and then we'll go ahead and set the time to Los Angeles okay so we can see now that we're in the Pacific time zone on uh, Tuesday May the 13th right so now let's go ahead and test if we unplug the device and plug it back in we expect now it to maintain that time okay because it's going to be keeping time on that RTC module with that little battery and it should then just um, load that using that RTC sync service that we set up. So here's our rainbow screen and we come in and we can see that in fact it did remember the time, right? So that's great and now we can avoid both the issue where when we turn the device off and plug it back in it remembers the time and we also avoid that time drift, right? And then another benefit here is that because the CPU doesn't have to um, worry about this anymore, it's actually gonna lighten the load on the CPU. So if you're building an application that is checking the time frequently, that needs that time to be updated, um, it's just not gonna heat up quite as much. So that's another benefit. So that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in today to learn how to set up an RTC module on your Raspberry Pi using RPI ImageGen. If you like what you saw, please tap that like icon. Really helps me out, helps share this content with others that are looking into RPI ImageGen, how to use it, how to set up things, um, and specifically for this one, how to set up an RTC module. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you're enjoying these series. I hope you're enjoying using RPI ImageGen to build your Raspberry Pi applications. Remember, never stop experimenting, challenging assumptions, and seeking the objective truth. I'm Johnny Mac. This is MacMind.io.